So with Godzilla taking a well-earned break after Terror of Mechagodzilla in 1975 and the commercial success of Jaws, Toei Company decided it was time to make a Jaws-like movie involving giant dinosaurs to bring some American trends to Japanese movies. Thus, the legend of dinosaurs and monster birds was hatched. Now, this wasn't the only dinosaur movie released in Japan in 1977, but don't worry, we'll get to the other ones soon enough. The story of Legend of Dinosaurs and Monster Birds begins with a hiker falling into an icy cavern where she is horrified to discover a large stone egg. Wait, stone egg? And in Yamanashi Prefecture, a stone egg was discovered in the rainforest area of the Sea of Trees near Lake Did he Sa say a stone egg? Mr. I think so. Yeah, that's what they call it, a stone egg. Wouldn't that just make it a stone? Why do they keep calling it a stone egg? If that stone egg should turn out to be a real dinosaur egg, what then? Alright, whatever. Around Lake Saiko near Mount Fuji, there is a festival going on to celebrate the Red-Eyed Dragon, an old legend about a mysterious dragon which lived in the lake and took children to their doom if they wouldn't stop crying. Jeez, isn't that a bit harsh? Anyway, would you look at that? A giant plesiosaurus has emerged in that very lake. What are the odds? And many people have turned up to learn more about this mysterious stone egg so there's plenty of victims for this thing to eat. There's not much plot outside of, you know, animals go missing, people suspect it's a dinosaur, it turns out to be a dinosaur, and then later, a giant Rampharynchus hatches and attacks a group of people. So, like at the Earth's core, we have yet another dinosaur movie featuring a giant oversized Rampharynchus? Why was this flying reptile so popular in B-movies? <laughs> I digress. This film is actually a lot of fun. It's got some interesting effects shots, including one I suspect inspired Steven Spielberg's framing for the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, plenty of gory moments which seem really out of place compared to the music, and some rather wacky and inventive camera angles, like this one where the plesiosaurus picks a woman up by her leg and we see this bird's eye view of her dangling over a boat that is meters below. It's pretty cool. It all builds to this epic fight between the plesiosaur and the Rampharynchus on the slopes of Mount Fuji as it begins to erupt. Our main characters are dangling over a fiery precipice and... The, the film ends? Well, what the hell happened to them? Did they survive? How could they just end it there? It was just getting good. Oh, well, The Legend of Dinosaurs and Monster Birds is a good laugh and worth seeking out to watch with friends who love to poke fun at movies. And if you don't have friends, then just watch the Mystery Science Theatre 3000 episode and enjoy it with Joel and the robots. I'm not in Kansas anymore. I'm not even in Kyoto anymore. Too bad she survived the fall, now she's got to be in the film. Two corny thumbs up from me. Check it out.